Hello everyone and welcome back to Introduction to SQLite. In this lesson we're going to look at getting started with SQLite, so let's go ahead and take a look at the material. SQLite is renowned for its simplicity and installing it is no exception. Depending on your operating system, SQLite can be installed with a single command or downloaded as a pre-compiled binary. For Windows you can download a pre-compiled binary from the SQLite website and add it to your system path. For Mac OS, SQLite typically comes pre-installed. If not, it can be installed via Homebrew with a brew install SQLite command. In Linux, use your distribution's packager manager, either sudo apt install SQLite 3 for Debian-based uh, distributions, or if not a Debian-based distribution, follow the instructions for your particular distribution. Once SQLite is installed, you can start interacting with it through the command line. Here's some basic commands. The first one is SQLite 3, which will launch the SQLite command line tool. .help will list all the SQLite commands that are available. .open and then the database followed by the database file name will open a database or create it if it doesn't exist. And .tables will list all the tables in the current database. And .quit will exit the SQLite command tool. And you'll see all of these examples in the upcoming lab. The SQL statement provided is a create table command, which is used to create a new table in the SQLite database. Here's what each part of the command specifies. The first part is create table users. This creates a new table named users in your particular database. ID integer primary key, this defines a column named ID with the type of integer. This column is designed to be as the primary key, which means that each value in this column must be unique and not null. SQLite will automatically increment this value for new rows if no value is specified due to the integer primary key being an alias for the row ID in SQLite. Username text not null. This defines a column named username with a data type of text. The not null constraint indicates that this column cannot be left empty. A value must be provided for every row. Email text not null unique defines a column named email with a data type of text. Like username, it cannot be empty due to the not null constraint. Additionally, the unique, unique constraint ensures that all values in this column must be different from each other. No two rows can have the same email address. And finally, create at date time default current timestamp. This defines a column uh, named created at with a data type of date time. The default current timestamp constraint sets the value of this column to the current date and time whenever a new row is created without a specified value. So that's the, the detailed explanation of creating your first database table. Now we're going to add some data to our table that we just created. So here's a breakdown of the insert command. Insert into is the SQL command used to insert new data into a table. Users is the name of the table where the data will be inserted. And username, comma, email, these are the column names in the table where the data will be stored. Values, this is a keyword to specify the data that will be inserted into the specified columns. John Doe and John at example.com, these are the values that will be inserted into the username and email columns respectively. When the command is executed, a new row will be created in the users table where the username column will contain the value John Doe and the email column will contain the value John at example.com. Each pair of values in the values clause is encased in parentheses and corresponds to the list of columns specified after the table name. If the, user name, if the user's table contains more columns, these columns will either be filled in with default values or remain empty depending on how the table was defined. In summary, this chapter covered the basics of getting started with SQLite, including installation on different operating systems, using basic SQLite commands, and creating a database table and inserting data. With this functionality established, you're prepared to explore more advanced features of SQLite. Well, that's it for this lesson. The upcoming lab will exercise these commands, and I'll have a demo video of the lab as well. But thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lab video. See you again. Bye-bye. Thank you for your interest in this video. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you would like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. Well, that's all for now. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.